welcome to our home. You're in Southeast Michigan. I'm Dr. Russ. And we picked one of the coolest spots in the house or outside the house because Michigan's had a record number of 90 degree days, 90 plus. And uh, so heat is a factor. We're in the cool place right now. Maybe cool in a couple of ways. Let me show you why. We're gonna talk today about personalizing your air gun so that it's totally different than everybody else's. I mean, some of these cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars. Why not have some personalization on it that makes it just yours? And so we'll be pulling from my scrap of, of decals and lettering, uh, numbers. Uh, even some metal plates can be adhered to an air gun. This happens to be a dragon, and I'm just waiting for the day that one of my air guns does shoot a dragon, and then I can put them on. Others of you who are into motorcycles may know exactly where these came from. I uh, organize a motorcycle class each year, and uh, it's in the North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains, a place called the Tail of the Dragon. Well, let's come over here and find out how we can personalize some guns. From this side, you see that this uh, Hatson Bully has just been started. I put a Vietnam decal there, a couple of uh, silver pinstripes on the butt pad. Uh, I've also come up here to the Ronin Moderator. Uh, this is their, uh, what do they call this, the Emperor. And uh, you need the Emperor, I think this is their largest one, for 357 Magnums, and that's what this rifle shoots. Well, at any rate, I decided to put a couple of pinstripes on it. But notice that the basic gun is just the way it was, um, black. This, of course, is the Hatson Bully. But when we look at it from this side, I have done more. Notice this pinstripe here running along the entire scope pin canny rail uh, just to accent it. And then I've run the double pinstripe along the barrel as well. Even the charging handle handle has gotten a piece of pinstripe, all making this a very personalized gun, at least to me. Let's take a look at this uh, Umarex. This Umarex um, 22. I've got this now in 25, two calibers, such a nice gun, and it's uh, regulated. So I put the red here on the butt pad, uh, nothing else on this side. Oh, I, I did put some red up here on this scope. Now I leave them on this for several months, and then when I decide I really like them, I put a little bit of clear nail polish on the tips, and that secures it there for a more permanent position. Notice on the other side, though, I've put my monogram right here on the cheek piece, being right-handed, I can put it on this side. But take a look down here on the, the receiver. I've run a double pinstripe line along that, just making it stand out, if you will. Um, I'll be doing that to both sides of this gun before it's over. An air gun that I have not done a, a test report on, and yet it's one of my most accurate. It's uh, Hatson uh, Bull Boss. A real nice bull pup, if you will. You'll notice that I've run the pinstriping down it. Um, notice I took a dime and polished it up, and then I just put a little bit of uh, uh, silicone glue on it and uh, stuck it right over the Hatson circular decal there, uh, uh, engraving there. Now why would I put a dime on an air rifle? That's because this air gun can consistently put pellets in a dime size hole. And uh, it's a dime that reminds me, take my time, be patient. Remember everything I know about shooting and put it in. Now, I did want to demonstrate for you just how easy these pinstripes can be. And so, I've taken a piece of pinstriping here and uh, 
we're going to put them on this side of the barrel. It's already on the other side, just so you can see. I run it all the way down here. It's always good to see the whole big picture, uh, which I'm now seeing. That looks good and straight. So now I can peel this clear side off and press down the rest. Got just a little wrinkle there. But pinstriping is actually easier to do than you might think. You see a wrinkle that I have in it, and I'm going to get that wrinkle out now. Pull it out, press it, lay it back down, and put it in place. Now something else you can do with these, and that is this. You can cut a, a, a line up this side here and bring the two together and clip them into a sharp point. So these two could have come on up and become a sharp point if I would wanted to. That's how easy pinstriping can be. And uh, they're easy to get at almost every automotive store out there. The whole reason we brought uh, personalization uh, to a video for you was people were asking about this gun right here. Notice that I took some cross rifles from my officer's uniform and uh, they have some pins there. I drilled some tiny, tiny holes there and stuck them in just like I was stuck sticking them into my uniform. Put a little silicone glue on it. I was part of the 11th Battalion, uh, 2nd Infantry, with the big red one. And uh, that means a lot to me. I left some men back there, and so I don't want to forget about it. So I have that there. And I have run pinstriping uh, down both sides of this. This is about six months ago, and you can see a little peel up is taking place. I'm going to have to press that down and put a little uh, clear nail polish on it. I also, um, you know, there's three noises when a gun shoots. One is the loud ping, and if your ears right up against this, you hear it quite well. Well, I put a piece of foam here. This wasn't to make the cheek piece softer, it was to insulate my uh, ear from that loud ping. Uh, the second is when the, the uh, pellet or bullet leaves the barrel, there's the large bang. Well, in this case, a moderator has moderated that down. And then the third is when the pellet or bullet breaks the speed of sound, which is 1,050 feet a second, and you hear this wing. Well, the best thing we do is to keep the air pressure in the gun down so that it doesn't get up over thousand and fifty feet per second and you can keep them quiet now something I neglected that's on two of my guns here let me show it to you notice that I put this bubble level leveler on it that's very very important I have one actually built into the scope that's on this particular bulldog over here you'll see a bubble leveler now why are bubble levelers important well, I can tell you that you not only have to sight a gun in, but if you can imagine for a moment, and my little finger here will be the, the barrel, and the, the pellet comes out of the middle of that, and my big hand here will be the, uh, the scope. Well, as long as that scope is directly above that barrel, we're fine when we make adjustments on the scope. But what if I'm holding the gun at an angle and not level? Now, the crosshairs, I'm putting it on a scope, and I may be making adjustments that will send the bullet in the wrong direction, and I have all kinds of trouble sighting this gun in, but not if they're always right on top. And that's what we've done here. Uh, I think these give you a little idea of just some of the things you can do to personalize your air rifle into one unlike all the rest. Now. I think you might want to watch next week. We're actually filming tomorrow. But let me show you what we're going to do. I've asked Hollowhead to join us here and set this up. Nice job, Hollowhead. But uh, these are bottles that use the traditional bottle cap. You can see a bunch of flour in it. Uh, these caps are made by Humorex. They're called the Big Blast uh, caps. 
and boy do I like them. Here's what you do. You stick a basketball needle into that hole right there. You'll see all of these bottles have that hole. And you turn on your pump or you pump your pump and you get up to 80 pounds of pressure in these. And then when you hit them with a pellet, a, a bullet, oh my goodness, the noise they make, the explosion of powder they make. You don't have to do powder. I put some water and then put some red food coloring in it. I think for tomorrow we're going to use some blue and other food coloring too. You can just leave the red pop in it if you'd like. But uh, all of these then will be tied so that when they go off I can recover these caps. These caps are a little bit valuable. When you buy them like this, I don't I think it's six, seven, eight bucks. Um, so I don't lose my caps. The bottle, oh, it's in a lot of pieces. Now, how will you know for sure that you're going to be able to see this particular explosive air gun video? And the best way is if you will subscribe. Uh, now, when you subscribe, I promise you're not going to get hit with a bunch of junk, and I don't sell names or anything like that. But what you will get is a notice every two weeks that another one of Dr. Russ's videos is out. And uh, you'll get noticed that these are out. You know, we got a bunch of them coming here uh, in the next, uh, all through August, uh, that I think you'll want to see. But you got to subscribe and then you'll know that they're coming. You can unsubscribe if you like. Uh, the other thing is, when you don't do anything else, I want you to know that Google does a vote and their vote is thumbs down. If you thought this video was somewhat informative, you want to vote today and you want to have a thumbs up. Now, why does Google do this? Well, they want votes, and if you don't vote, it's an automatic Google vote down, or you can be in control and do a, a, a thumbs up. Well, what happens? They have a very sophisticated algorithm. I call it their recipe, and the number of votes help uh, keep uh, our videos on the sides or the bottom when you when people turn on YouTube videos and we get more exposure. Uh, no voting, that's a down vote and you'll have trouble finding our videos. Um, lastly, here's a good reason to watch. You continue to watch our videos. Now, this is number 19. Uh, we've only been at this six months and we have 50,000 viewers altogether from all over the world and over 500 subscribers already in just six months. And there's a reason. They want to stay air gun sharp.